So hello again, everyone. I'm Kimona Sotirkos, and today I'm going to show you something a little bit different from what I've been showing you in the last couple of videos, in the sense that this time I'm not going to show you something that's owned by the Notebooks Working Group, but this is going to be a collaborative effort we had with Andre, one of the main leads of the AutoML Working Group. And this is an effort of creating a new web app for AutoML that integrates with Kubeflow and the other web apps. So here is, here is the web app. A first disclaimer, although I'm going to talk more about it in the end of the video, this new UI will not be available to you directly in 1.3. It we already we do have images for it, but we will stick to the current one as the default one because this one is not on par yet. But at the end of the video, I'm also going to show you ways on how to install this UI and give it a try. We really want you to use this UI and give us feedback, but feedback, but since it's just not ready 100 percent up to speed with the current one, we don't want to make it a default one yet. So what I want to do in this video is to mainly navigate you around what's different in this UI and what it allows you to do. I'm not really going to dwell too much into what AutoML in Kubeflow is and what an what's an experiment, how to do hyperparameter tuning, NAS, etc. I'm going to take this information for granted. So I'm just going to navigate around how you could use this UI and what's new. So the first thing that we see is that it's integrated with Kubeflow the same way that all of our other UI, all of our other UIs do. We have the our symbol table, it's connected with the dashboard and with a select namespace. So it follows this exact same principle. And the first thing that we can see is our the main table we're accustomed to where we see a brief overview of the experiments in our cluster. All of mine are succeeded right now. We can we can see some brief information like how many trials were successful, how many failed, how many are currently running. And we can quickly look at the optimal trial, which is the, the model that got the best performance from the set of hyperparameters, and briefly take a look at what's going on. We can also see specific informations for each one of the experiments and also create new ones. So the first thing I'll show you just how to create a new one, and then we'll we'll check uh, specific ones uh, as a next step. So we just create, click on the create new experiment. This is an entire new form from what we've been doing for the other web apps. And this is the one that we believe that gets it right because it allows, it encapsulates all of the information into specific steps and also give you some help around what's going on in, into its, its one. Here we have the name and the namespace. We can configure the trial thresholds. We try to explain what each of these steps are so you don't feel lost and you know what to do. Also, most of these settings are were also available in the, in the previous UI. Most all of the things I show you here were already available, but we just show them, show them in a different way to be more, just a little bit more user-friendly. We have the objective, which is where to where a caddy will look for the performance and the metrics. The, a really important part is the, the search algorithm where you can select if you want to do hyperparameter tuning or neural architecture search. And one important fix we did in this UI is the fact that whenever you select an algorithm, we're also going to be providing you the uh, full list of settings you can do for this algorithm. So you don't have to go back and forth into the documentation to see what's supported. We will try to keep this list up to date so you can have everything you need into that list and just change the values that are supported. But of course, we also provide a link to the docs to make it easy for people to just jump to the documentation, see what's going on for further details, and then come back and further continue with their creation. Just going to create a random search space right now. We have features like early stopping. Again, as you see, we keep on showing some details on the right for every step so you know what's going on. We only have median stopping value, but this is going to be fixed. And again, you can select the settings for this algorithm. I'm not going to use it for now. A really important part is you can see where we've reworked on how you can define your hyperparameters. First of all, we try to give an estimation of the number of different combinations 
that would be produced for this hyperspace. You can see uh, that for the we try to provide a more user friendly way of of showing the different values, like what's gonna be the domain, a minimum, maximum, what's the step, or showing you the list of values. You can also add new parameters if you'd like, which can would follow up the the API of Katy of Katib. I'm just gonna stick to the defaults right now. I'm really afraid of adding new stuff because I'm not really accustomed to the underlying AutoML mechanisms. So I'm just going to create a default basic random example. We can select the metrics collector, which is where will the our container, how will it expose the logs that Katib is going to be checking and understanding that, hey, this model is doing good or it's not. There are different mechanisms where you can write these logs and Katib can work with many different sources. And last and most importantly is the trial template. And the trial template is actually the Kubernetes spec of the trials. And by trials, trials will be the jobs that will be launched for an experiment. So we'll have our, our search space and for different configurations of the search space, we'll see different trials running for for its configuration. And the aim of Katib is to just find the best trial. And in this section, we're going to be defining what is going to be the spec of the job that is going to be running. So here inside of this container, it will be our model that gets trained and, and exposes logs like, hey, I just got, I'm, I'm training, this is my accuracy now, this is my accuracy now, I'm improving, I'm not improving. And this part is really important because it's actually the meat of the of the ML. That's where the model runs, and we can configure a lot of things like where do you, how do we want to define this spec? The default one is to choose from a from trial templates from a config map that contains many specs, so we can select different specs. These are defined from Katib itself, and these config maps live in the kubeflow namespace. Or if we're feeling adventurous, we could just provide our own YAMLs for it. But, um, but I don't feel too adventurous right now, so I'm just going to stick with a default YAML. And we, can, we will also need to define some substitution parameters. Right now, we want the spec to be using the learning rate from the parameters we defined above. So my hyperparameters are learning rate, rate LR number of layers and optimizer. So I'm just going to punch this in into my parameters. The LR layers and optimizer. And we can provide this a small description for our convenience. Learning rates without a typo. Whoops. So the most important things that, that we believe this form gets right is the fact that right now, before I just create the experiment, it allows me to edit the YAML that will be su submitted. And this is really useful because it will allow me to, to do any last step modifications I might want, I might need. And this makes this means that I'm not only limited to what the form allows me to edit, but in the end, if I'm an advanced user, I can just say, okay, this is what's going to be submitted. Let me just add some annotations over here that I know I'm going to need. Okay, so with this, we're going to create our experiment and we see it getting created. And in a little bit, it will start its uh, trials. If we take a look at it, right now, it, no trials have started running yet. We can see the details of the experiment. We can see a brief overview of its status, although since it's really early, we don't see anything important right now. We can see, oh, there we go. So the first trials just got running. And yep, we got the first three. And we have defined the uh, num total number of three my parallel trials. So this is why we see three right now over here running. And the reason they're black is because they haven't really exposed any metrics. So we don't have an accuracy yet, and that's why all are grouped together. But let's actually jump to a finished one so we can see the whole picture once it's finished. So this is how it will look like after it's finished, or some of the trials have some metrics. 
we can filter what experiments we want we, by selecting all the specific part of them. We can, so we can just see the, the best performing, the, the best ones with the best accuracy. And of course, in the we can see automatically what's the best one because it's uh, it has a yellow color. And if we'd like to see the specific timestamps of how the model performs, here it, it had two two validation metrics: one one for train accuracy and another one for the validation. So we can see both of them and how they're comparing between uh, how they compare. So we can see that uh, we can monitor the trials, the best, uh, the config, the parameters of the of the best model. We can see the details of the experiment in a more human readable way, and of course we can also see the entire YAML of the experiment, so we can have the all the information we need in a right available to us. So this wraps our tour of this UI. But at this point, I would like to also iterate on some things that you should have it in your mind as you use the as you use the UI. And as I mentioned, the most important one is that the UI is not on par yet with the current one. And what's really missing right now is the ability for you to actually play around with the config maps of the trial templates. Now, the current UI has a distinct page where it, allow, it shows you that, hey, you have these config maps, it has these values, and you and allows you to edit them. But this UI right now does not allow you to do this. And we're already actively working on this with Andre and the other leads of the work group to actually redefine our story behind it. And this actually, and the reason behind it is that we want it to align with Kubeflow's best practices. And that is right over. Right now, we have a all of our config maps live in the Kube, in the Kubeflow namespace, but this does not really align with what Kubeflow wants, which is to have userized relation and every user has have its own namespace. So we're talking through on how we could only have the config maps live in its namespace, not all all in Kubeflow. Now this creates some edge case scenarios like who's going to be the one responsible for creating them. But we're, we're sorting these details out, and this is what we're going to be working on for 1.4. And this is the mainly what's keeping this UI to be on par with the current one. But also, this is a, a an effort on its early stages. So while we do want to keep the current UI as a default one for now, we do really want to highly encourage you to give this a try and give us your feedback and help us further improve it. So with this, let me also give you a quick tour of how you could actually see the progress of this UI. We have a distinct Kanban board for this progress. So you can see what we're, what we're, what we're discussing right now, what we're working on and what's getting done. And also you could see how to install this UI by navigating to the, to the repos readme. We have a specific section for it. Well, we walk you through how to use this UI instead of the current one. Well, the TLDR is that you just need to update the Docker file and you will be ready to go. And with that said, with all this said, this will wrap up our video this time. We're really happy that we, with this effort and it's and the collaboration is going amazingly well and we're constantly defining what we like and new workflows for this UI. And your feedback, feedback would be really valuable on helping us define what also users would like to see and what would like to be improved. So with this, thank you again for watching and see you in the next one.